Hello ladies and gentlemen, Ecology here and welcome to the 9.15.1 test server. And in this video I'm going to be showing you the next three HD tanks. The T57 Heavy, the MAA1, the M37, and the AMX 1375. So sit back, relax, and enjoy this video. Look at that. The, sh the, uh, the, the paper thing moves up and down, which is cool. Alright, let's look at the suspension on this vehicle. It's not really going to be that surprising. It is just a patent chassis, so it's it's going to be a patent suspension. So, if you've seen one patent, you've basically seen them all. Well, one American heavy tank tier 10. Basically, seen them all. These don't kill each other. But the suspension's not bad. Not supposed to track. I don't know, it's not a bad looking vehicle, I just, I'm not a big fan of the auto-loading system. That's the only problem I see with um, tanks like this, is auto-loading systems. Stop, I yelled stop. So that means everyone stops where they are, no ancestor plots. So I say go. Hopefully, it works out that way. Yet, how many people are actually going to listen? I have no idea. No, don't traverse your tank, you dingleberry. Because I want to, I want to look at your front end. Oh, this tank has crappy traverse speed. Please don't destroy his gun. I need the gun. So. I'm getting frustrated here. Oh, come on! I said, stop! so much. Just want to look at your HD model in detail so I can be happy, please. Thank you. Nice track detail. See, now I'm all cranky. You got some hooks on the front so you can see or toe. Ugh. Headlights on both sides. Marker lights. Horn. And blackout lights and all that other lights. Viewport. Got the nice cloth ring. I want to see his gun rifle. Of course, I'm gonna attract me with um heat. But we got a vision port for the gunner or the loader. Got the commander's hatch, a machine gun, 50 cal, two, a 10 eyes, four. Can I see the? Uh, there is. I can barely see it. People, so frustrating. This is why I work with myself, because it's easier and not frustrating. So we got a nice drive sprocket. The track lines up nicely with the, the um, drive sprocket, except for here. It overlaps a bit, but that's all right. Track looks nice. Idler wheel. I love the track as it gets tracked. Nice road wheels. Return rollers. Inside the turret has nice detail, nice crisp American logo. I don't know if you can hear me with all this gunfire. You got a viewport here, external hardware, backpack, helmet, and stuff like that. Just quite nice. Looks like a tanker bar, a external storage box, a crank. Just in case you have to do a hand crank start, which is interesting. I would appreciate it if they didn't track me though. Now the rear end detail. As you can see, the track looks fantastic. Like I, I wish this was a little bit more thicker of rubber, but I can't really complain. 
I don't know what that is. Maybe it's the travel lock for the gun. I'm guessing that's for the radio or telephone. That's the travel lock. Thanks for driving in front of me. Tow hooks. You got a tow cable coming off that one. A bigger one. Don't know what those are. But you got marker lights, tail lights, and all that other fun stuff. And then we come around to the last side of the tank where you have more storage over here. You can see with the dust, another box. Don't kill him. And then if I go a little bit more closer, we can see that there's an axe, a shovel, there's a hammer on that side. And the engine detail, you have some hatches over here, some filler caps for your oil, gas, and other stuff like that. Some ventilation, so your exhaust is up there. Just want it. <sighs> this is why it's hard to work with people. Especially when they don't communicate. Come on. Just want to see the back of the turret so I can end this review and kick people. Because people need to be kicked from the server. Well, the back of the tank can't see. Awesome. There we go. Back of the turret, we got this very big, long piece of metal. Got the rear end of the skirt that goes all around the tank, which looks kind of nice, actually. And the other side of the tank basically has the same stuff on the other side of the turret. Not tank turret. Grab irons. On top of the turret, you have an access port for probably spent ammunitions, the ventilations, commander's hatch, and probably the gunner's or loader's hatch. Probably the gunner's hatch. up with this. People are going to get kicked. Like, I'm fine with people helping, but if you're not going to help, don't help at all. Like, it's much helpful for me. But that's it for this tank recoil. That's the teeniest recoil I have ever seen. But yes, yes it does. Um, that's a very scary artillery piece that is rolling by me. I'll let him go through. Awesome. No harm, no foul. Now let's go to the suspension. Up, down, up, down. Now, this one disappoints me. As you saw on the Locust, it looked beautiful. This one, not as much. As you can see, that just stretches and it just... It works, but it doesn't work at the same time. It's just like, meh. But, it's suspension. I see this model being really, really meh. Which is interesting. Why make one model super, super fantastic and then leave out the rest? Interesting. <laughs> so let's look at the tank in more detail. The slower way, but the most efficient, I say. So you got some tow hooks. This one actually has a cable running all the way from there to the back. You can see it has gun rifling. Has headlights and a horn and a marker light, which is good. Has a two hatches, one for the driver, one for the co-driver, because Americans like having dual gunners. Turret is pretty bland. You do have your sight to aim the gun, so the gunner's over here, I guess. Um, but that's basically it. Side detail is pretty bland as well. You do have a very pretty side skirt. I love side skirts on my thing. The suspension looks pretty good. Doesn't really function that good. It looks pretty good. Nice drive sprocket. I like drive sprockets. Return rollers. I like the Stewart. The Stewart is a pretty, very nice tank, and I quite like it. Wow, you have exhaust coming here, here, and there. That's pretty neat. 
that is graded you can see but it looks very crappy and you can't really see it I guess it's over dirty that's the only reason I can see other than that you have some handrails grabbing steps you know to get onto the tank the back of the turret doesn't really have much detail it just has this basket looking at the engine deck Looking at the engine deck, you can see fuel filler caps, oil, transmission fluid, you know, all that other radiator fluid and stuff like that. You have a light, you have this box up here, you have an axe and a sludge hammer, a lot of grab irons, the ventilation, all oh, that itches. Oh, I'm sorry, that came out of Norrisville. Side of the turret has these. I don't know what they're for. I am guess they're to prevent, um, Sticky mines? Sticky sticky stuff, I guess? I don't know. Oh, gosh. I itch. I have an itch. So inside you have a box of, looks like, for ammunition. You can see the turret ring, which is quite nice. You got some shells down here, which kind of sucks right now because you can't really see much detail because of the lighting effect on this tank, which is quite bad. Um, you got the radio. That's the radio down there. Um, the driver's position's down here. Uh, the co-driver's position's over here. You can see some more detail coming up. Like, yep, there's the radio. Uh, internal fire extinguisher, it looks like. Um, I really hate this, um, lighting effect sometimes. But yeah, that's basically it. Some more um, storage, probably for ammunition, for the gun. And the turret is relatively stock, nothing much to see in here. You got the mechanism for the gun, which looks nice. Can I have him fire? No, I can't. I'm upsetting. He has no ammunition. <laughs> Balls. And then on this side of the turret, you have some fuel, or yeah, fuel. Um, you have some storage for probably ready racks and ammunition and stuff like that, which is quite nice. All in all, it's a very nice tank. I quite like it. Detail-wise, it's quite small, but it's at least at least it's functional, I guess. But if I have to give this a rating, I'll give it a five, a five out of ten. So that's it for the M8A1 tank destroyer. Onwards to, I think, an artillery piece. I said that last time and it wasn't an artillery piece. Balls. And we're going to go check out its suspension. This is based on the uh, um, Stewart, or the Chaffee, I guess. M24 Chaffee, I think. So it has Chaffee suspension, which is quite nice. But yet, it doesn't really have the chaffy speed. I don't know if I have the full engine, but it feels very sluggish for being on a chaffy chassis. Chaffy chassis. Wow. That sounds awesome. A chaffy chassis. Chaffy chassis. Chaffy chassis. Chaffy chassis. Chaffy chassis. Chaffy chassis. Oh my gosh, that's a tongue twister. Try saving, saying chaffy chaff chassis. Chaffy chassis. Chaffy chassis. Like 10 times super fast. Like it's such a tongue twister. Which is like hilarious. So we have a nice drive sprocket. Track lines up nicely. Um, a nice road wheels. I like the road wheels. I your wheel. Return rollers, which is quite nice. I don't know what these are. Tent poles at weird angles. I I don't know. I have no clue. Would make sense though. Tent poles. There's tarps or tents. Would make sense. Put our tent up. And then we have another tarp or bag or something there. Uh oh. Which is all sense. Some grab irons to get up and into the tank on the side, here and there, which is awesome. Alright. Tab and traverse. This pretty little tank. I do like the M forty seven or M thirty seven, my bad. It is a beautiful looking artillery piece. It's a shame that I have never picked one up. So we have the track, which the rubber is quite exp um, big, or there. Oh look, numbers. I like numbers. 
Ah, uh, stop it. I like numbers. I like seeing numbers and builders' numbers on things. Okay, we got hooks. Oh no. This one has a tow cable all the way going there. The front of this artillery piece has an axe, a shovel, a pickaxe, and a cable going all the way around with the travel lock, which is nice. We got a very loud artillery blast happening. Two headlights. I think that's a horn. Not quite sure. And yes, it is rifled, as we can see here, by phasing through it. And we have a uh, jerry can or a canteen. I, I can't really see from this angle. The gun plate has its viewport, which is quite nice. And there's a 50 cal on top, which is quite nice. And I go through. Well, we can see all where the powder is stored or the casings for the explosive. Then we got the engine right here. This is for the intake of the radiators and the engines basically behind there, which is quite nice. We got a spare jerry can back there. And well, I'll have to get a better angle when I traverse the tank. When the tank traverses, that is. I'm not traversing my tank, he's traversing his. Why should I traverse my tank? That's another question. So basically I have the same side detail here with the tent frames, poles, the handrails, the same suspension and drive sprocket. The only thing different is this. It has a 50 cal mounted placement. And let's see if I can phase through it for a little bit. So we have a jerry can. On this side it, we have like the radio system I guess, or not the radio system, but something. And then we get into the driving compartment. Ooh. So we have the driver's chair. Interesting. I'm going to traverse to the rear. Or he's going to traverse to the rear so I can see it's Batoot. I wish I had a sh some shells loaded. But sadly, I do not. So we have the exhaust right here. Tweeny, teeny, tiny exhaust. Marker lights, blackout lights, reverse lights, all the other lights. Tow hooks and stuff like that. Tents and tarps to cover the tank when it gets wet and rainy. More ventilation for the engine. And then we start going inside to view some more. So a crew member would stand here and sit here while controlling the gun. Meanwhile, inside, which you can't really get a good view because it is dark in there. I wish there was like a flashlight mode. You can see a chair. I'm guessing that's like the tillers or something. Got the transmission. Not quite sure. It could be really detailed in there or it could not be. It just depends on how well the developers want to detail it. So that's it for the M37. It's a very nice looking artillery piece. I really want to buy one just to have it in my collection because it does look very pretty. So with that being said, that's it for the artillery. On to the next vehicle. So here we are with the AMX1375. And this vehicle is a French scout tank. And it has been HD. I love HD tanks. And I have to say this is a very beautiful HD model. Suspension first, and then I look at its tank in detail. Oh, pretty nice suspension. Simple torsion bar suspension. I keep saying leaf spring. Leaf spring is not the proper suspension, it's torsion bar. I suck. I legitly suck. So the track is pretty nice. The drive sprocket looks like it matches nicely with the track. So now a bit. You got some tow hooks, which is nice. A very loud explosion. The travel lock for the gun. Spare tracks. And we have a very naughty Russian. And we have a sledgehammer. A, looks like an access port. Some uh, tow rope. Another port, probably for the engine in the front and if the swivel that point it up a bit and we zoom in can we see gun rifling yes yes we can that is rifled on the gun looks like we have is that a bolt 
Looks like a bolt. Oh, interesting. Interesting weird thing. Ha <laughs> uh, people. Smoke launchers on each side of the tank. Grab irons on each side of the turret. Radio ten eyes or tenas tennies. A two eyes. First the turret. Awesome. So we're looking at the side. We have a nice either wheel in the back. Very nice looking road wheels. Not as detailed road wheels, but they're quite nice. They do the job. And we have a drive sprocket that looks nicely done. And we look at the side. We got some hatches or storage spaced armor type deal. We have the exhaust which is nice. The smoke launchers, a spare jerry can, and that's basically it. Traverse, my friend, traverse. Show me that booty. Awesome. So we have beautiful track. More tow hooks. Got a tarp or a tent in the back, which is nice. We got a tanker bar. We have tail lights, marker lights, and whatever that is, a brake light maybe. Same thing on this side, just in case one side is broken. And we have the hatch where spent ammunition would be spit out. And we have a wooden bar, or a wooden stick, handle for something that I don't know what. And let's look at the last side. This side doesn't have the exhaust, so basically this side is just spaced armor, um, storage basically and you got the shovel the pickaxe the french logo some grab irons and that's basically it i wish she stopped tracking me that would be nice oh i didn't track her. so then i look on top of the turret got some turret detail hand rails commander's hatch uh Gunner's hatch? Not quite sure. Uh, engine deck detail, you got the driver's hatch with the driver's viewport, some ventilation, the radiator fan, and more ventilation, which is all cool. All in all, it's not a bad vehicle. It's quite nice. I like it. Um, yeah. I think it looks great. I like everything about it. So onwards to the next vehicle. And here we are back in the garage with the T-57. Let's go over some of its weathering effects. We got some paint removed from the top of the barrel, paint removed from the top of here and around the entrance point to the turret. We got a very big gouge of a shell ricocheting off the top of the turret. The front plate has some weathering here, where probably the driver gets up the tank, I guess. I don't really know. Driver's hatch is weathered. Not much weathering around the side, except for the the box, storage box. It's weathering on the turret, around the hatches, which looks fantastic. A 50 cal machine gun. Now, I'm sorry for the video about the T-57. The people that I was playing with were kind of not being good. They were being non-good. And if those people are watching this, shame. Shame on you people. Shame. But yeah, we got some weathering on the engine deck. Weathering on the toolboxes. All in all, looks pretty well. I'm just upset that the um, video didn't really go well for this tank. I should redo it, but... Oh, I don't feel like it. I do not feel like redoing a video. That takes time and effort. <sighs> so here's the M8A1. Based on the Stuart chassis. Which looks pretty nice. Some weathering around the top of the barrel. Or tip of the barrel. Base of the barrel. Some nice internal weathering. Some scratches down the side. Weathering here. Wow, there's a lot of weathering on the front of the vehicle. Which looks nice. 
more scratches along the side, some dirt and weathering around there, and especially around the engine deck. Uh, pretty plain in my opinion, not that much weathering, but I do like this vehicle. I, I, sh I need to play it more, but I need to get my crews to 100%. That's what I'm trying to do. That's my main goal in World of Tanks right now is get grinding my premiums and getting the crew to 100%. And that's what I'm trying to do so I can put them back into these crew tanks and play them with 100% crew because it, it kind of frustrates me that some of my tanks don't have 100% crew. So here's the M37, a artillery piece based on the hell of the Chaffee chassis. Chaffee chassis. Uh, I can't get over that. Uh, but you got some nice weathering around here on the lower plate. Out here, the turret ring or the ring for the 50 cal would be weathered, of course, because it would spin. It would spin. Some scratches along the side. Some weathering around the engine bay. Some around here. Some down here. A lot of weathering. Some scratches down the side. Internal detail. There's some paint missing around here, around there. Because this would be the main access port to the engine. They would basically maintenance right here. Which is quite good. Because you don't actually have to go outside. Go in the back. Climb on. And then do engine work back here. It's relatively safe. Because you're inside this vehicle. And you can basically lift all that up. Or take it out. Or whatever. And start working on the engine from inside the safety of the vehicle. So let's say a German troop comes up to this vehicle. And starts shooting at it with small MP40 machine gun fire. This armor would protect them. Now if they're using like an MG42, I don't know. Maybe not. And then the commander or whoever's in charge would hop on the 50 cal and just bulldoze all those poor Germans away. Because 50 cal rules. Woo. <laughs> so that's it for this, right? Nope. No, no. We have the Amex 1375. My bad. I was like, okay, done. Yeah. So we got weathering around the, the muzzle of the gun. A lot of scratches on the barrel, which is quite nice. I like to see that. Weathering on the lower plate. Around where the driver can go up. I'm guessing that's where the driver would get here. Scrape along there and get into his hatch, the engine deck. Scratches along the side, which looks fantastic. The turret is well weathered as well. There's a lot of missing paint detail. Especially around the hatches on top. The commander's hatch, the loader's hatch, or gunner's hatch. Which looks all fantastic. Scratches down the side. I like the weathering detail on this tank. I'm not a big fan of this 1375. I wasn't a big fan. But I did have some good games in it. So I can't really complain. It does look beautiful. So with that being said, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. And I'll see you in the next one. The next one should consist of the FE215B183, the FE304, the T341, and I think the 121. I'm not quite sure. So yeah, enjoy, and I'll see you in the next one.